Ooh, ooh. Palm down body hook, eh? You ready to eat one? Here's how to throw a tie hook. So the idea is I come around like I'd be throwing, say, a boxer style hook or an extended hook, but I'm gonna be throwing the thumb down and all the way so that I can hit with my two big knuckles, mostly aiming just behind the ear and having the furthest extension on my arm. So of course you can throw that on power side to come around or you can throw that on your lead side. Just make sure to keep your elbow slightly bent and your wrist locked straight so you don't jam the wrist or the elbow up while throwing a tie style hook. Practice gently on the heavy bag so if my partner actually just puts her hand up, I can start punching here and just feeling a little bit of resistance. If you don't hold your wrist straight and you don't lock that elbow a little bit bent here, you can end up jamming it pretty hard. So practice lightly to start, try to get your hand motion in, almost hitting down on the, on the target like this. And then you can progress up to a heavy bag to try to practice that hit at full steam. A thumb up head height hook or boxer style hook. So from this, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to throw the punch at the strongest skeletal and musculature integrity possible. So as soon as I start turning my hand out or even as far as say a tie hook, I'm putting my joints at, at certain levels of risk. So the idea is you'll never have a more powerful hook than the boxer style hook in here. Now there's kind of an old joke is like two guys are arguing like, oh, I hit with Dolph Lundgren style power. And the other guy's like, well, I hit with Rocky Terminator style power. Well, what does it matter if all it needs is 40 pounds right on the jaw there? So the accuracy of your punches is more important than the power. But when you're working, say, on a, uh, a target like an EJ, for example, here, you want to make sure that when you're throwing that hook, you're trying to clip either straight on the nose or into the chin. I rarely want to try to hit towards the back of the ear of the head here, just leaving me a little bit more exposed. So she brings her hand up. I'm here just for me to hit, oh, please. Pardon. I'm here like this. I'm trying to throw that hook with very little distance between my chin and my hand here. Make sure your opposite hand is up, chin is down and elbow is in line with the wrist. So I'm not raising my hand or lowering it. Thumb is up, palm is facing me. Palm down body hook. So this time what I'm trying to do is throw somewhat of a dangerous style body hook. And the reason for it is, is that I'll always have a little bit of angle on my arm. So my wrist is gonna be somewhat below my elbow. Elbow's gonna be somewhat below my shoulder depending on the height of your partner. So when I go to throw this, what I'm trying to achieve is just as much power or pressure, but on a much smaller surface area when I throw palm down as opposed to a thumb up or palm in body hook. So the reason why we would do this is number one, to cause immense amount of pain, but number two is it can be a much longer range style body hook. So from here, if someone's kind of keeping their hands up, if I throw more of like a thumb up or palm into me, I have to be very, very close to land that successfully. So if I throw palm down, I can get a much further reach and hopefully attain that attack and be able to bring my hand back or counter if necessary. Double elbow chop. So this, the idea behind the double elbow chop is not to use this in sparring, but classically in Muay Baron or Muay Thai, I would come up with both hands very Tony Jaw style, and I'm dropping down both my elbow tips either into the opponent's head, but my personal mm -hmm. favorite is into the clavicle. So right on the yeah. collarbone. So if we were here, let's say she threw a cross at me, we could come in like this, one, and I'd jump in for how we'd start a single elbow, or you can leap into the air if you're amazingly athletic and drop your elbow tips right into those clavicles. So a double elbow chop is both elbows circling down like that. Flying spike elbow. The flying spike elbow comes from a fighting stance here and I'm trying to jump into the air almost like I'd be throwing like a Superman jab or a Superman cross. So my back leg is extending out to try to build that momentum. So I'm stepping off my lead leg, loading my back leg up and then gonna swing it forward to continue its momentum, bang and come in with that flying spike elbow to the top of the head. Or if you're really, really nasty, if she has her head up a little bit and she kind of fades back, you can land that right to the breastplate here. And that sucks. It's, it's also very, very much showing how much trust I have in him that I'm letting him do this. Trustful. Uh -huh. All right, guys. So unfortunately, Sarah can't squat 300 pounds on each leg. So we're gonna have her Goodbye. demonstrate how to do the mountain climb elbow. So from here, the left hand hooks the neck, the right foot comes to the lead hip, she steps up and then does a spike elbow to the top of the head. 
So on the other side, be careful with your partners, guys. If, if you're working with someone that weighs more than 86 pounds, <laughs> if she steps here and she has some substantial weight on that, someone's knee could get torqued out. So just do the mountain climb very, very safely. It's kind of a fun drill, not something you use in sparring. So we're here, lead hand goes for clinch. Opposite leg steps up, she drives up and strike. <laughs> Let's try that again. So lead hand goes to the neck, right foot to the hip. Good, she steps up with the other leg, bang. So what we're trying to do is basically make a ladder out of our opponent. So we're stepping here and then trying to solidify here, holding them down with a clinch a little bit and then landing a six o'clock elbow. One more time. There's our mountain climb elbow. Okay, so faking the teep kick. So the idea is pretty simple here. If I've landed a bunch of successful teep kicks on my opponent, and they're getting uh, used to not wanting to deal with that pain. <laughs> so if I've landed this kick a whole bunch of times, oftentimes what'll happen is that they'll either move out, shell out like that, or maybe even try to catch on the kick. So faking that teep at that point, if I've had a bunch of successful attempts at landing it, then just a quick movement can sometimes cause a desired reaction for whatever you wanna set up with that fake. Uh, something that we had learned from Gabriel Varga though, that I really, really liked his tip, is he said, try to show your opponent the bottom of your foot. So try to sell it a little bit before you get into your function, whether you're coming back with a punch, elbow, whatever. And what I thought was cool about that is that oftentimes you get so calloused and seasoned if you sparred a lot that you're not gonna make any reaction unless something is like 80% of the way completed. So just two ways to kind of think of setting up a fake for that teep is if you haven't landed a bunch, you could kind of fake it and show her the bottom of the foot, so to speak, and and try to almost complete that kick, then follow up with a desired reaction. Or if you have landed it a bunch, a quick knee tilt or a quick knee lift like that might get you the desired reaction. Okay, so our question mark kick, try to think like you're drawing a question mark from the bottom portion and then kind of coming in with it. So from down here and then coming in. The idea with the question mark kick is this. I wanna try to come up with almost like a loose loaded uh, teep kick or a front kick like this. What's gonna happen then is I'm gonna slightly drop it to develop some power and then whip it around to do my roundhouse kick. So if I'm here, I'm one, two. Now you can take that to any height. Uh, oftentimes you can develop a lot of momentum and drop it down to the leg. So sometimes I'll use it to get people to bring their hands up. So I'm kind of faking going to the head and then dropping it down onto the leg. So just from straight on, if I'm here, I'm gonna pick that knee up drop it slightly and turn it around. So one, two.